And one of the reasons producers list for transferring property to a revocable trust is to avoid probate at death. And to ensure the process happens properly, the trust is often accompanied with a pour over will. Of course, we need the man to explain this. Roger McGowan with the Washburn School of Law for some guidance. Roger, a pleasure. So let's start with the main reasons for avoiding probate. I know a lot of people can guess, but break that down for us. Well, good to be with you, Suzanne, and sorry for the connection this morning. Uh, there are numerous reasons to avoid probate. Sometimes people have the misunderstanding that if I avoid probate, then I can come out better uh, from a tax standpoint if I have a revocable trust compared to a will that does, that does the same thing. And the answer is no. The tax result is going to be the same uh, when we talk about particularly federal estate tax. So the tax result is the same, and if they're in a state where there is transfer tax at death, the result is going to be the same whether you have a trust or you have a properly drafted will. So there's no difference from a tax standpoint. Now, from a privacy standpoint, there is. A will becomes public record when it has become probated. Uh, a trust, all that becomes public record is a certificate of trust existence, which tells the world that you had a trust. It doesn't tell the world what you owned and who got it. And some people are pretty sensitive about that. They don't want that to become public. And that's a big issue for farmers and ranchers. Another issue that I think there are misconceptions about is the cost of a probate. So I, I want to create a trust so I don't have the cost, the probate fee, the attorney's fee for handling the estate. It is true that probate costs are generally higher than trust administration costs, but I still think there's a lot of misconception about what those probate costs are. In many states, it's going to be pretty reasonable, and the, and the courts sit there as an effective check on what is an appropriate fee. Uh, Roger, this is standard across the board as far as the state to state? No, it, it's not. Uh, the probate fees will differ from state to state. Some states allow attorneys to charge a flat percentage fee of the gross estate value. That is, particularly in Kansas, that's barred in Kansas. You can't do that. You have to back up your fee request to the court, which has to be approved by appropriate time records that show what you did, how much time you put in on it, what your billable rate is uh, on an hourly basis. And the court then determines in its own judgment whether, based on the work that you did, your fee request is reasonable. Other main factors courts consider when determining whether a fee is appropriate or not? Yeah, there are numerous factors. And that, in, in, for, for, for example, Kansas, I think, is a good roadmap for what a lot of states do. They say, well, what's the time and labor that you put into it? How difficult were the questions involved in the estate? Or was it a pretty simple estate? How likely is it that it will, it will preclude you from other employment? What's the customary fee in the locality for similar legal services? What, was the, uh, what were the results obtained? What's the nature and length of professional relationship you had with the client? And what's your experience and reputation and what's your ability? Uh, more experienced lawyers can charge more, and you know the thinking is they're going to be able to do it in a much quicker time, so you're, the fee is not going to be that much higher. So it really depends on the situation, and that's why the court in Kansas and in many other states, but not all, sits there as the final arbiter of whether the fee requested is reasonable or not. Wow, thanks for breaking it down for us, as always. Roger McGowan with the Washburn School of Law. Pleasure, Roger. Have a great Christmas.